Good morning. <laughs> the guys are waving their hands and they're saying, let's get going. So good morning. We welcome you here. We're so glad that you're here and welcome online too. We hope that everybody fared well with the hurricane and we're so glad that you could come out here this morning and be with us and worship with us today. So I'm just going to share a quick verse. Um, it comes from Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 24, 25. And it just says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So it's just really encouraging just to see everybody here. It's great that you come and that we're together as a family, a church family, and we're so glad to see all the new faces that come out too. So. If you want to please join us and stand and sing a What a Beautiful Name, that would be lovely.
Good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? Good to see that everyone's made it through the storm. <laughs> from what I heard from people, it wasn't too bad around here, so we can be thankful for that. Well, we welcome you here to Union Street this morning. If you are new here, this is your first or second time joining with us, we welcome you. There's a Connect card in the seat right in front of you. Feel free to 
uh, fill that out, drop it off at the office. We'd love to connect with you in that way. Start off announcements this morning. I just want to touch on a few of our weekly programs that are back in action right now. So on Monday morning this week, we are starting off again with our book club. Um, that's going to be happening this Monday morning. Tuesday at 7 p.m. is our youth group. That's going to be happening then we had that going last week. We had some s'mores we made over in the CE Center. We didn't have a campfire in the CE Center. We just put them in the microwave. I feel like I should clarify that. <laughs> just so everyone knows. <laughs> but yeah, Tuesdays, 7 p.m., we're meeting up for youth group again. Wednesday nights, 7 p.m., men's group. Shout out men's group. Uh, and Thursday morning, I think we're believing, I believe we're starting our connect, connection time there as well with coffee and all that on Thursday morning. So lots going on throughout the week here at the church. It was really awesome to see. A few bigger things as well to announce. We've got Next Kids coming up September 28th. That's when we're starting off our midweek kids programming. That's, from K to, that's for K to 5. It's starting at uh, 6.15 to 7.30. We have 6.30 to 7.45, but we're hoping to start at 6.15. So we'll, we're going to be switching that up once it starts. But that's going to be happening September 28th. If you, have to, if you haven't registered your kids yet, register your kids. If you'd like to help out with the program, feel free to get in touch with me. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, we also have Ignite coming up really soon. Ignite is going to be happening on September 29th from 7 to 11 p.m. This is something I've mentioned it before, I think, and I talk about it a lot. But I'm really excited about it um, just because we have a really great opportunity to partner with some other churches in the area to run this. And it's not just our area. It's for all of Charlotte County. I'm really excited for what this could uh, turn into. We actually filmed a little promo video this, uh, the last couple weeks, and I think we're just going to play that right now, just to show you kind of what we're, what we're working on. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Dan, I'm the Youth and Family Life Pastor here at Union Street. Hi, my name's Carlos, I'm the Assistant Pastor at St. Croix Christian Center. My name's Jonathan, I'm the Assistant Pastor with King's Church St. Stephen. And we are super excited to be here talking to you today about our first Ignite Youth Rally. Our first Ignite meeting is gonna be happening here at Union Street Baptist Church on September 29th from 7 to 11 p.m. If you'd like more info about the event, feel free to check out our Facebook page, uh, the website, or if you want, you can email me, pastordan at usabc.ca for more information. So we're inviting all youth from Charlotte County to join us for this first Ignite Rally. You can be from anywhere in Charlotte County, whether you're from St. Stephen, Or if you're from St. Andrews. Or if you're from Blacks or Beaver Harbor. Or if you're from Mesa's Bay. Or if you're from St. George. I think we're looking forward to an evening of powerful worship, amazing speaking, and lots of other fun. Our main purpose with Ignite is to encourage, engage, and equip the youth of Charlotte County. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means now. Yeah, it's on our heart to encourage the youth uh, within Charlotte County. Uh, we just we want to make an event that, that uh, puts you in the realization that you are part of something much bigger than just the, the local circle at your local church, but rather there's a presence of youth within Charlotte County um, that, that I believe really has the favor of God on their life. So we want to invite you out to this rally to realize that you are part of something much bigger than just your local community, but rather there's a presence of youth who are hungry for seeking more of God in Charlotte County. So we want to create this event so it provides a space for you to encounter others and to be encouraged and sent back to your local communities. Yeah, it's also our heart that we engage, not only engage our church friends and our church groups, but also to engage uh, those of you that are still seeking truth, those of you who have uh, some questions about what God is about, we want to include you in that. That word engage means literally to involve you. So we want to involve those uh, at large. Whether you've got a big youth group, small youth group, whether you're from further out or, or right here in town, whether you go to church or never have been, we want to involve you and we want to engage you. And finally, we want to equip you. Life throws a lot of challenges at us and it's hard to navigate those sometimes. So with our teaching and our worship here tonight, we want to equip you to live a life like Christ's and for Christ. Hey, what's up guys? This is Post-Production Dan. 
coming at you just to say we're super excited to have you coming out on the 29th for Ignite. If you want to register, there will be links below where you can go and do that. So get signed up and we're really excited to see you. Now, there isn't links below because this is real life and on a website, but there is on Facebook where you can go and sign up. <laughs> also, you guys have no idea how many tries it took, it took me to get the, the lines right, but um, <laughs> we, we eventually got it. So, but yeah, we're just really excited for that. Really love how we're able to connect with our other churches in the area, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a really great time. So that's going to be happening, like I said, September 29th, 7 to 11. We can still use a little bit of help in the kitchen if you uh, want to participate and take part. We'd love to some help there. So. Again, if you would like to, feel free to contact me about that. A couple other things. A mission encounter is going to be happening here at the church on October 1st, 6.30 p.m. Um, this is going to be a really great time just to connect with one of our missionaries that we support here at the church, Catherine Scott. She's going to be coming in and doing a little presentation for us then. That's going to be a really great time. So that's going to be happening October 1st at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and then Baptism Sundays, that's going to be happening on September 24th. We're going to be having classes over the next couple weeks for, for some of our kids. But if you're interested in getting baptized, whether you're young or old, feel free to contact me or Pastor Angela, and we would love to connect with you on that. One final thing, we've just been speaking a little bit about connecting with other churches in our area. We're going to be having Aaron from Gateway come in with us today just to share with us a little something that they're planning on doing for Christmas, but their, his power went out and so no access to a computer or anything like that. So he has, uh, so I'm going to be him for this morning. <laughs> so um, they're having a Christmas choral uh, called Tonight Heaven Touches Earth uh, this Christmas at Gateway, and they've invited us to come in and take part in that. So there's going to be music, narration, and drama at this event, and they want... Uh, and they've invited us to come out and take part in that. So we'll have a bit more information about that uh, just in the coming weeks, I'm sure, but uh, in a few, in a, pretty soon they're going to start uh, rehearsing for that. So if you'd like to take part in that, if you'd like a little bit more information about that, again, just talk to me or Angela about that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pray for our kids and for the offering, and then they're going to head over for their time. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's talk to God. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for a sunny Sunday after the storm. We can just gather together uh, to come and worship you. God, I just pray for the offering that comes in today. Uh, thank you for that, that uh, which just goes towards promoting your kingdom work here at Union Street. God, I pray that we'd use that as you see fit and that we'd seek your will out in that. Finally, God, I pray for our kids as they're he heading over now for their time. Pray that you'd be with them and their leaders and you would just teach them what you want them to know this morning, God. God, I thank you for all this. I pray all this in your name. Amen.
Every breath that I am made. 
That is a very familiar Christian hymn originating from India. And the lyrics are based on the last words of a man in Garo, Assam. About 150 years ago, there was a great a, a revival in Wales. And as a result of this, many missionaries came to northeast India to spread the gospel. The region known as Assam was comprised of hundreds of tribes who were primitive and aggressive headhunters. And into these hostile and aggressive communities came a group of missionaries from the American Baptist missions, spreading the gospel, the message of love, peace, and hope in Jesus Christ. And naturally, they were not warmly welcomed but one missionary succeeded in converting a man, his wife, and his two children. And the man's faith proved contagious, and many villagers began to accept Christianity. But the village chief was not happy about his village following Jesus. And he, in fact, he summoned all the villagers, and then he called the family the family who was the first ones to convert to faith, to renounce their faith. That they were to renounce, renounce their faith in public or to face execution. The man named Garo, that he saw the intent of the chief, that he knew this was not just an idle threat, that these words were true. That in fact, he had, he could see other villagers with their arrows ready. He knew, he knew what was going to happen. And moved by the Holy Spirit, he replied, 
I have decided to follow Jesus. He said it again, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Enraged at the refusal of this man, he summoned and he shot two arrows into his two boys. And as those boys lay dying, he said, I, your wife is next. I want you to renounce your faith because your wife is going to lose her life too. Though no one joins me, though no one follows me, still I will follow. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The chief was overcome with fury because no matter what he was doing, this man would not renounce his faith. And then they shot an arrow into his wife. He said, I'm going to ask you the last time. This is the one time to save your life. I need you to renounce your faith. In the face of death, in the, in the incredible grief of seeing his beloved wife and children die at his feet, he said, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. And he was immediately shot with an arrow, dead like the rest of his family. But with their deaths, a miracle took place. The chief who ordered the killings was moved by the faith of this man. He wondered, why would this man die that he allowed his wife and children to die? That he had such incredible faith about a man named Jesus who lived in a faraway land on another continent some 2,000 years ago. There must be some remarkable power behind his faith, and I too want that. And in a spontaneous confession of faith, he too, the chief, declared, I too belong to Jesus Christ. And when the crowd heard this from the mouth of their chief, the whole village accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That is st the story behind the popular hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. It is amazing how one man, who knew nothing beyond the borders of his village, became an evangelist to his nation. That his faithfulness reflects in every word he spoke at the face of death, impacting millions across the world, turning their hearts to Jesus Christ. Sociologist tells us that the most introverted individual will influence 10,000 people during his or her lifetime. And that was before social media. We all have influence. We all influence one another in, our, in all sorts of ways and by our words and our actions. Think about how you can have a mundane day and then a child smiles at you. And all of a sudden you are uplifted and you find yourself smiling at strangers. Or how somebody, you remember a story of, of, of somebody in your family just who had acts of generosity to you throughout your life. And you're thinking back and you're thinking, well, that's why generosity is such an important part of my life. I can trace it back to this person and now I'm a generous person. Or think about maybe you're an encourager, that you just, everywhere you go, you're encouraging people but it's because you were influenced at one time by somebody, maybe it was a coworker or a boss who noticed your work. You thought you weren't even noticed. And they gave you affirmation. And it totally changed your life. And then you began to be an encourager of others. I'm grateful for the many people that have influenced my life. 
My grandparents, parents, family, friends, teachers, students, coworkers. And inevitably, I hope to be an influence as well. I know I'm an influence, and hopefully it is for the good. Because whatever we say or do, we will influence others, either positively or negatively. In other words, you matter. I matter. And what we say or do matters. We are all people of influence. You may think, what difference can I make? Maybe you don't have a platform as big as some Maybe you feel you're too old, or maybe you feel you are too young or too shy. I love this African proverb. It says, if you are too small to make a difference, you haven't spent a night with a mosquito. <laughs> the mosquito makes a difference in an annoying way, but the principle is the same. One person's encouragement and kindness can save a life. One person can be a voice for truth. One person be, can be an advocate for awareness. Think of the Terry Fox run that's going on today, 43 years later, still bringing awareness and research and money for cancer. One person can stop a great injustice, and one person can lead a multitude to faith. Jesus knew the power of influence, the power of a single person, and he encouraged his followers to continue to live like him, to love like him, and to lead like him. Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, the last thing he told his disciples before he ascended into heaven, he said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I give to you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even into the end of the age. Last week, we, we talked about the Lord's Supper, how we have been invited, all of us have been invited to a seat at the table, that our seat has been reserved with our name on it. And we have called, been called not just to accept the invitation, but to call others to join us at the table. And the Lord's Supper is this reminder not to forget what Jesus has done. It is that reminder and celebration of the past, present, and future. That God sent Jesus to demonstrate his love and grace to the world. That Jesus went to the cross to restore that broken relationship in the garden to break the curse of sin and death. And the Holy Spirit was to remind us of what Jesus said and to help us in all things, to empower us and to equip us. And all this was done with intentionality and purpose. So we too would live our lives with intentionality and purpose, to intentionally share our faith to share the hope and healing found in Jesus. That is what we are called to do. The other command Jesus gave his followers was baptism. In our Baptist heritage, we call these in the church two ordinances of the church, the Lord's Supper and baptisms. They are referred as ordinances as this is something that Jesus orda ordained or commanded to the church. Sometimes they referred as sacraments, but these are not to bring about salvation. They tell others about the salvation found in Jesus. The Lord's Supper and baptisms are opportunities to focus on Jesus, and it's this beautiful reminder of the gospel message. The early Protestant reformers used to say that ordinances were visible words of the gospel, that we hear the gospel preached with audible words and see the gospel displayed with the visible words of the Lord's Supper and baptism. 
baptism is an outward sign of an inward commitment. Whenever I do baptism classes with, with children, that I, that I talk about wedding rings, how they are symbol of marriage. And baptism, baptism is that symbol of an inward commitment that you have made to follow Jesus. That baptism in the Bible expresses an identification of Jesus' death and his resurrection. The old self was crucified with Jesus through the waters, and now followers of Jesus have been risen, love, risen with him in the newness of life. That every time that we see a baptism being displayed, we see the gospel message. We see Jesus' death and resurrection. Acts 2.41 says, So those who accepted his message were baptized, and about that day, about 3,000 people were added. The people in Jerusalem heard the preaching of Peter, and 3,000 repented and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Immediately, they were baptized and added to the number at the church. Baptism in the early church was the first step of obedience after salvation. Once they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they were immediately baptized. Why did Jesus command his followers to be baptized? Well, to answer that question, let's, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 3, starting at verse 13, and we're going to look at Jesus' baptism. Starting at verse 13, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. Since John's message was about repentance, John's words were often repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. His baptism was a baptism of repentance. And John considered inconceivable and inappropriate that he would baptize the Messiah because Jesus had nothing to repent of. He was sinless. He was perfect. But Jesus told him to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus knew his mission to come to seek and save the lost that Jesus would be taking on the sin of the world, offering forgiveness and righteousness through his death and resurrection. Second, Chronicle, Second Corinthians says, God made him who had no sin to be sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was baptized as a public proclamation of the beginning of his ministry. He was bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. And Jesus was baptized to identify with us as a sinful humanity, but also as a servant, a servant who obeyed the will and the word of God. So we see Jesus obeying his father through baptism. Verse 16. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending him like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love and whom I am well pleased. In the Old Testament, God promised that the Spirit would descend on on his chosen servant. That I'm sure those people that were around gathered watching Jesus be baptized, that they remembered the words of Isaiah. Look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one, he who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. God identified Jesus as his son. 
the voice from heaven confirms this eternal relationship between the Father and the Son that they share. And note, all three members of the Trinity are present. The Father and the Spirit publicly endorse the Son for his kingdom mission. The Apostle John, who witnessed Jesus' baptism, who witnessed his death, says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water, and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit who is truth confirms it with his testimony. Both Jesus' baptism and his death testify to his sonship. At his baptism, the spirit confirmed this testimony by descending on him like a dove. In the Old Testament, a matter was settled on the testimony of two or three witnesses. And here God has testified about the Son by his baptism through the testimony of the Spirit and truth. In these events, God gave testimony to the truthfulness of his Son and his mission. And the second witness is the Spirit who validates on the inside what God does on the outside. Jesus has called his followers to be baptized as he was baptized. When a person is baptized, it pleases God, and it brings honor to Jesus as you are following his example and obeying his command, that you are publicly professing your faith in him. I love how baptism is a physical picture of a spiritual reality. That a believer's baptism is an identification with Christ's death and resurrection. What we said before, the old self was crucified with Jesus going under the water. And now followers of Jesus have risen with him in the newness of life. Romans 6, 4 says, For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also live in new lives. Next week is Baptism Sunday. It's also a potluck after church. And we have some people that want to publicly proclaim that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. And the question I have for you this morning as how about you? That have you been baptized as immersion? It was really sweet this morning. I had a, I had a middle school ask me and said, I was kind of baptized as an infant. So is it, do I get baptized again? And when I explained to her, which I've said before, that as a child, when a child is baptized, when a, when a parent brings and dedicates their children in different denominations, so it looks differently. Some it's a sprinkling of the water. Some, some is just a prayer that is said. But that's a parent and a church family that they're coming into dedicating. And what is beautiful about a baptism, what we call a believer's baptism, is that now that child who is older, they are agreeing with their parents, with their church family. They are saying, I am going to follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So it's this beautiful, what I think, affirmation. So too often people think, well, if I was done as a child, I'm not able to, or I may dishonor my parents or my church family. In fact, I think it does the opposite. It affirms that. So if that's your story, I hope you hear that message. Often people can not be baptized that they think, well, I don't know enough. Well, we see in the early church that as soon as they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they were baptized. That they were just beginning their faith journey. And this faith journey is something that God has planned for us, that we will continue to grow more and more in love with Jesus, more and more like Jesus, till the day we have our last breath. That we come to the waters of baptism, we don't come knowing fully everything to know about God or this, this walk of faith. 
we come humbly surrender. It's his public profession. It, what is so beautiful is that we too get to participate. We get to witness someone else's proclamation of faith being baptized. And it is this beautiful, whenever I see it, I am just deeply encouraged, whether that is a, a, a child or whether that is an adult. One of my favorite baptism stories was told by, uh, he's, he's with, the, with the Lord in heaven now, Dr. Vincent. And he had this woman that she was older and dearly wanted to get baptized all her life but was afraid of going under the water. And they had this church in St. John and there was a big baptismal tank. It was so big you could actually see, it was a glass front, so you could see people's feet and legs as, as well. And you could see when she, came, when she came out to be baptized, she was excited but nervous. And he goes to take her under, and all of a sudden she, she runs away. And so everybody watching this can see her running away. And he gently brings her back for the second time, says her name, in the name of the Father, Son, and she runs away again. The third time, brings her over. And this time, in front of everybody, he trips her, and down she goes and comes back up. And then she says, thank you, Dr. Vincent. Thank you, Dr. Vincent. You may be like that person that has accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior a long time ago and for whatever reason have never taken that next step. I want to encourage you today, if you feel you're older and, you, and you've been on this journey, a faith journey for a while, but that is one thing that you haven't done yet, I encourage you to take that next step. Because there is something, something so beautiful that that happens. That I believe that just God smiles widely when he sees his children be vulnerable and humble to come through the waters of baptism. When they're doing this in front of their family, showing that they are going to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, align themselves with Jesus and try to live a life. Baptism is an act of obedience. It's this beautiful display of the love of Jesus. There is no way that man over 150 years ago who was martyred for his faith would imagine the influence he would have on millions of people. In fact, I want to follow Jesus was the song that Billy Graham often did in his crusades, and that's how it became that much more popular. He did not know that those words that he spoke on that awful day for him would be composed into a hymn sung worldwide. I have decided to follow Jesus will bring hope and encouragement to others. For us in, in North America, when we hear that, that song, it's that song of often it's a baptism or somebody come forward, I will follow Jesus. But for many others, that endure persecution, that lives in countries where Jesus, the name of Jesus, is not allowed to be shared and the gospel message is not allowed to be shared. This is a song for them. This is their anthem song of persecution. This gives them encouragement. It influences them. So today I want to ask you, friends and family, how are you influencing others for Christ? How are you being a witness for Christ. That often that we think we have to have this grand thing of the beautiful thing about God that he can use the simple things. Whatever we have in our hands, like the loaf and two fish, he can multiply it and bless it. That God wants to use you right where you are to influence others. And maybe that is through baptism that I believe that we will never know the impact we've had in others until we're in the kingdom of heaven. When we're sharing stories, and there could be somebody that you don't even know, and they say, well, let me tell you. I'm here because of you. 
you're, th- you're looking around thinking, is she talking to me? Is he talking to me? It's like, yes. I was there the day that you got baptized, and I realized I need to learn more about Jesus. I need to take this next step in my faith journey. So I want to thank you. Friend, you never know the influence that you are going to have. We sang that song before the sermon, let your kingdom come. We pray for the kingdom to come. And that is our prayer. We're praying with other churches in our area. It's exciting to see God is moving and seeing this collaboration. It's a beautiful thing because that's what the kingdom God is all about, that one day every tribe, every nation will just sing praises to him. But friends, we need to do more than pray. Praying is wonderful. Don't hear what I'm not saying. We need to pray. But we also need to be active. We also need to take those small steps of obedience. So what is God calling you? What is he calling you? What is he inviting you to? Can you imagine if we all took that little step of obedience? Maybe for you it is getting baptized. And I want to say if next Sunday doesn't work, we can do it anytime. So we'll just chat. But maybe it's for you inviting a coworker to a small group or inviting them to church. Maybe it's just being generous, showing kindness, smiling at every person that you come. I have no idea, but I do know that just as God was intentional with all things and had purpose behind everything, he's called you and I to be intentional and purposeful as well. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you how you love us, how you relentlessly pursue us in a relationship with you. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you how you speak and how you call us each by name. And that you have each given us different spiritual gifts, God, to build your church and to partner with you, God, and to partner with other churches. So we thank you, Father. May we continue, God, to be obedient to you. May we continue to take those steps of faith, those steps of obedience, whatever it looks like. Give us a boldness and courage like that man so many hundreds of years ago that that took that ultimate courage that he died for you, God. And you are not asking us to do that here. You're asking us to trust you, to take that step of obedience, whatever that looks like. So God, may you continue to speak. May you continue to draw us closer and closer to you. Because God, we do. We stand amazed at who you are and that you have called us to partner with you in bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. We thank you. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. And they are, they're going to sing that song, I Stand Amazed. In the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wondered how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean, singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall end. Sins and my sorrows, he made. 
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thanks and have a great week.